I've just finished filming and recording the great Ninth Symphony, his final one, with Schiller's famous Ode to Joy, sung by chorus and soloists in the last movement. And I've come out of this experience, curiously enough, thinking about dates of all things, comparative dates, which is a thing I very rarely think about, having conceived an immense dislike for memorizing dates while studying English battles during a Shakespeare course at college. Agincourt and Crecy, ugh, when exactly was the Thirty Years' War or the Hundred Years' War? And yet, suddenly, after conducting this Ninth Symphony, dates began to swarm into my head. Look, I suddenly thought, Haydn and George Washington were both born in the same year, 1732, exactly 100 years before Goethe finished his Faust and died. Crazy thoughts like that. Why in heaven's name, I asked myself, am I suddenly bedeviled by this kind of academic thinking? So I indulged in a bit of self-analysis, some free associations, and I now know why. The reasons lie deep in my emotional insides, and I'd like to share them with you. My associations led me back to the year of my own birth, 1918, the year of the great armistice, which brought the First World War to an end. Now I had the key. The password was peace, armistice, brotherhood. Ain't gonna study war no more. Peace, brotherhood, we are all children of one father. Let us embrace one another, all the millions of us, friendship, love, joy. These, of course, are all the key words and phrases from Schiller's poem to which Beethoven attached that glorious music, ranging from the mysterious to the radiant to the devout to the ecstatic. And so my madness with dates was not so mad after all. I was not mulling over 1066, the Battle of Hastings, and 1216, the Magna Carta, and 1848, Social Revolution. Rather, I was grasping at 1000 BC when King David sang his sublime psalm, Hineim matov umanayim shevet achim gam yachad. Behold, how good and lovely for men to dwell together as brothers. And grasping at 400 BC, when Aristophanes wrote his inspired anti-war comedy, The Peace. And 800 BC, when the prophet Isaiah promised us that men will beat their swords into plowshares and the lion will lie down with the lamb. And above all, that supreme date when the Prince of Peace, almost 2,000 years ago, pronounced the divine doctrine of Christianity which has since encompassed the world. And where are we now, two millennia later, when Belfast, for one thing among many, runs with blood and rings with gunfire in the name of that very Prince of Peace. How long, O oh Lord? The dates keep springing to mind, and each one is a fierce accusation, a terrible challenge to what we pretentiously call our human race. Take 1824, the year of Beethoven's Ninth with its Schillerian message of brotherhood written four decades earlier. And what did we have four decades later, in 1864? The American Civil War. And a hundred years later, in 1924, brown shirts rioting in Munich, strikers being gunned down in Chicago, blacks being lynched in Alabama. And in 1974, 150 years later, was that bloody end in Vietnam something we can call peace? Did it bring brotherhood? Yes, the brotherhood of the boat people, of ever-increasing thousands of desperate refugees. How much closer are we to David's psalmodic dreams of the loveliness of brothers dwelling in unity? One can answer only with the bitterest ironic facts. We have never before in our human history had so many nations 
and how those nations rage. So many frontiers, passports, boundaries, barriers, walls. So many hypothetical dividing lines on such highly unrealistic maps. David, Isaiah, Aristophanes, Jesus, Schiller, Beethoven. How you must be suffering. Forgive me for getting carried away. I had meant to stick to the subject of dates and of Beethoven. But it is all one. Beethoven is struggle, the struggle for peace, for fulfillment of spirit, for serenity and triumphal joy. He achieved it in his music, not only in his ninth, but in all his symphonies, and in his quartets and piano sonatas and trios and concertos. Somehow, it must be possible for us to learn from his music by hearing it. No, not hearing it, but listening to it with all our power of attention and concentration. Then, perhaps, we can grow into something worthy of being called the human race. <laughs>